Hi guys and welcome to this Q&A. In this particular video, I'm gonna um, cover the topic of how to control a loop with a hotkey. A lot of people, especially those that code scripts for games, they like to, they, they usually like to have a loop of commands, for example, that, they're, that they want to repeat over and over again, but they want to have it in a hotkey that starts and stops the loop. It's a very pretty simple um, concept. Uh, but they usually run on onto a specific problem, which is the one that I'm going to be showing here. Um, first of all, I'm going to show what the problem is. Then I'm going to try to explain why it happens. And then I'm going to show the solution. Uh, so, uh, the reason why I'm not just going to do the solution is because if you understand what it is and how to solve it, similar problems can be solved as well with this solution that I'm going to give you. So um, let's go ahead and start with the with the with the coding so we have a hotkey and they usually want to control a loop so let's have a loop which is going to tooltip our a index simple as that so the way the algorithm for this the way how they usually code it is obviously having a, co a toggle. So you want the first time that you press the hotkey to do something and the second time to do something else. With a toggle, a basic toggle, you can do that. So you grab a variable, doesn't matter which name you put, you use the not operand on that same variable and there you go. And you assign it to itself. That's a basic toggle. Now what they do is the following. They check if the variable is set. So if it is true, it is going to execute the commands that they want. In our case, it's just a tooltip. If it is not, it's going to break the loop. So pretty straightforward. It is an algorithm that it is not bad. It, it, it looks logical, but it has a specific problem that I'm going to explain in a few seconds. Let's first run the code. I press the Windows Z. We get the tooltip here. And if you keep pressing Windows Z, nothing happens. And the tooltip is going to continue going. And usually they go to the forum and ask, but why? <laughs> because it's logical. But yeah, it isn't. Um, there's something that they're missing. So first of all, I have to explain a specific uh, idea, which is the th multi-threading on a program, on a piece of code. Um, first of all, other hotkey is not multi-threaded. That's where the problem is. Now let's explain what that is. Um, in this particular piece of code, our hotkey would go line by line executing this, and this is what you would call a thread. Um, it goes in this direction from top to bottom, but the problem is that it cannot have two things running at the same time. It will not have, um, it will just go one line at a time and one thread at a time. In other programming lang languages, other programming languages allow you, some of them allow you to, to have multi-thread, especially uh, that, that is designed for computers that have more than one CPU and that way one CPU handles a part of the code and the other uh, CPU handles another part of the code at the same time and which makes the program faster. But our hotkey is not like that. So here comes the issue. You press Windows uh, Z. So our hotkey starts a new thread. It starts reading the lines. It toggles the variable. It enters the loop. The loop checks if the variable is toggled. Yes, it is. It starts um, sh uh, showing up the tooltip. And it goes again. So we haven't gone out of the loop yet, right? So we are inside the loop. And the loop checks if the toggle is still set. It is. It is going to continue being true. So as long as you don't go out of the loop, that means as long as, we, as, as that variable is not false and we hit the break here, it is going to continue being true and it is going to continue showing the tooltip. Now when you hit the, the Windows Z again, a new thread should start, but as I mentioned, only one can be running. And at the moment, the old thread, which we are inside the loop still, is still running, so our hotkey cannot start a new thread. That's where the problem is. So, as the new thread is not um, starting, this particular toggle is never happening. 
and the loop is going to continue being true. Uh, so it is going to the, the toggle is going to continue being true and the loop is going to continue running the old thread. The new one is never happening. So that's what the problem is. How can we fix this? Um, there is a directive called max um, threads per hotkey. I think it is like that. Let me double check that directive max threads per hotkey without the S at the end. And this particular directive allows us to change how many threads per hotkey can run. It is just that simple. That's what it says, right? <laughs> so basically, if you put two in there, problem solved. Why is that? Well, I am not 100% sure how our hotkey handles that. Um, but the way that it does it is that when you open up and you uh, when you press the, the hotkey again, it will stop the old thread and start a new one. I am not so sure how that goes. I'm not so sure that's the way it goes, but this is the solution because a new thread is going to start in which we're going to actually do the toggle and the loop is going to break. So basically, if you run this, you will be able to start and stop the loop with one hotkey. So um, I hope that this actually was clear enough um, for you to have an idea. There are other um, situations in which you would need more threads per hotkey, um, not only for a loop, but um, this is the most common, uh, the most asked one. So with this, I'm going to finish up this video. I hope that it was helpful. And um, thanks for watching. See you again next time.